All right, before we can start uh, texturing our model, we need to have a UV map uh, unwrapped from our model. So every 3D model is going to be in three-dimensional space, and to place a texture on those, we need to have um, a two-dimensional representation of that 3D model. This is going to be the UV map. So it's kind of the process in between modeling your object and then creating a material of it uh, consisting of you know different textures that'll make up the color the transparency if it's glowing the, the qualities that are going to make up the surface of of the model and for the program to be able to understand what the surface needs to you know look like where it needs to be transparent where it needs to have this color versus a different color it needs a uv map to um, kind of connect the faces of the, to be able to display the correct pixels on the correct faces of the model. So that's what the UV map is going to be. So here's an example of a texture. It's a color texture. It's going to be um, connected to the UV map. And then when that UV map is going to be uh, unwrapped from this model, it's going to take this texture and correctly place you know the, the the pixels of this uh, you know of this portion right here with the correct portion on this face or this polygon right here and that's pretty much what UV mapping is and this is going to be the case for all kinds of models um, whether it's you know organic or hard surface whatever it is this is going to be the kind of starting point so uh, this is this was our workflow from the crate tutorial so to get into the uv editor uh, we're going to use another workspace presets so we're going to come over here we're going to come down to uv editing we're going to click that um, so before we start this one thing you might want to do is go to windows settings preferences preferences and then come down to files projects and scroll down until you see image files and make sure that automatically reload updated image files is clicked on and then save that uh, this is when you're working so when you're working within Photoshop and you you make an adjustment in something and you come back to Maya it'll automatically upload or update that alright so this is going to be the UV editing uh, little workspace we can see we have our main view here, but then over here we have something called the UV editor. Uh, we're going to be able to move around this UV editor in the exact same way we can move around in this uh, window over here. So I can zoom in and I can pan. We can't rotate, but that's because this is a 2D representation of 3D space. Um, then we'll have our UV toolkit over here, which has the same kind of components, right? Uh, so if I put down a cylinder we can see that uh, we have a UV map that it automatically created and that is the case with all of these primitives they all kind of come with a UV map already kind of installed um, some of them are you know to start off with they're sometimes good sometimes bad uh, but if you want to check them you can come up here to this checker map and this is going to be this checker map is going to be how we really look at uh, the distortion on our, our maps and we want to make sure we have good uniform squares and we can see on this torus we really do not have that um, but this is a good way to kind of check to make sure check and make sure our UV map is um, proportional um, alright so if we turn off this checker map just so we can go over these little component uh, uh, the UV toolkit components so if I come over here and grab edge, right, you can see that the edge light lights up over here. So if I grab this, I'll select this, but notice it's, I'm not just selecting one. In the UV editor, I've selected two. And that is because these white lines here that go around this object, that is where a seam has been cut. Um, you'll see down here there's an area to where we can cut. We're going to do that a little bit later, but for right now just know that this is you know, if this was uh, like a metal pipe, it's you know wrapped in fabric, and we wanted to be able to sew the fabric on there or take the fabric off, we would need to be able to cut, you know, a, a little um, uh, to 
cut around here to be able to pull this fabric off or likewise we need to be able to put that back on and sew it on so that's what these little white lines are going to be uh, are going to be these little cut areas um, so over here in our UV uh, our UV editor we can see if I double click on this this cut right here it corresponds to this shell within this UV space but then also this the top of this cylinder right there and so if I double select over here and I start to try to move something it's going to affect uh, this area that it is um, also connected to because they're sharing the same edge um, so that's going to be with all of these little components over here because I'm, I'm selecting the components if I come over here however to the UV selection and select that I can then come over here and I still have the same kind of option I can only select points with this um, and if I select it over here on the 3D object it's still going to select both of those but within the UV editor if I have this selected I can select one uh, point and then let's say loop select by holding shift and double clicking and then I can just move this uh, this one object around or this one shell around um, I can double click this shell for instance and move it around and I can kind of deal with my UV uh, my UV shell separately versus coming in here selecting these points and double clicking and it's now selected both of these because they are connected in you know on the object over here so um, sometimes you want to use, you know, uh, sometimes you want to use the kind of component selections and go back and forth. Sometimes you need to just you to be manipulating just the UV uh, selection and just the UV shells separately. So that's going to be the difference between these. <coughs> um, all right, I'm going to delete this and I'm going to put a cube down. And you can see this also has cuts here that have been made, just like if you took scissors and this was made of cloth and you cut down here, down here, down here, then you could uh, unfold this uh, unfold this cube, right? We can see that the uh, top one is right here, and right down next to it is going to be this one, right? And so it doesn't have anything on the side because it's been cut, and then it has been unwrapped. Um, so this UV map right here, uh, this is going to be what we're going to be exporting out and uh, painting in a different program like Photoshop and then bringing it back into Maya and applying what we have painted in Photoshop to the object. Uh, so how do we get this UV map outside of this program? Um, so all we're going to do is, uh, is go out to this object and have the object selected there's two ways we can do this. The first one is we're just going to go to image with our object selected. I'm going to hit UV snapshot and it's going to bring up this UV snapshot options. I'm just going to go down to something like PNG and then I'll just name it something like out UV cube. I've already done that. All right. And it's just in my, it's by default going to go into my uh, Ally Japan images folder not my source images but my images you can change that if you want I'm just gonna leave it as this and then I'm just gonna hit apply and close you you do want to usually change your edge color to something besides black or white something to where you can see it and then I'll hit apply and close and you can see saved file appears down here and I'll come to my Photoshop document or open up Photoshop on my photo or my PNG I'll open with Photoshop and now we can see that this is if you can kind of see the wireframe is there um, so this is what we'll, we will use as like a blueprint right uh, to place our textures our painting whatever we want to put down here you know bits of, of photographs um, so I'm gonna leave this wireframe as is and I'm gonna click a new layer and I'll bring it below my wireframe and the wireframe can be turned on and off might be a good idea to double click there and name this wireframe and then uh, go into layer two and let's say I can you know I want to paint this as a background so I'll just come in and 
click this kind of gold color and this is my background and then I'll hit another uh, blank layer here and then just to kind of see what you know just to quickly put something down to get this you know concept across I'll just write down one two three four five six and then I'm going to save this without this wireframe on it otherwise the wireframe will show up on my texture and then I'm going to save this as save it on my computer and I'll bring this to my source images so I'll go to Japan because this would if I was done with this this would be one of the, the source images I'd be using for this so out UV cube and I'll turn this into just a JPEG for right now so this would be you know for instance if this was going to be one of my final uh, images and I would save this out and then so that's done that's saved so I could come back into Maya select my object and then come to my attribute editor and then go to Lambert 1 because that is the, the, the material that has been selected to this uh, or been assigned to this and then I can come to color right and so we were seeing uh, in previous tutorials that we could change the color of something we can also click this little checkered uh, icon right here and it'll bring up the create render node and it we just want to hit this file because we're going to be attach attaching that uh, JPEG file we just made. So I'll click file and then image name. If I come over here to this folder and click that, I can go find uh, the image that I just made. So I'll just back out one in this up arrow and then I'll hit source images and I'll find my out UV cube texture and then I'll open it and uh, just to see this quickly so we're not having to render things out to, you know, to see I'm just going to come to shading over here and then come to hardware texturing so you will not be able to see this unless you go to shading hardware texturing in your uh, kind of view over here All right and then if I click on my object I can see it's showing now the, the, the texture image that I have they have assigned to my color Lambert material of this cube. So that has been UV mapped. It is now, you know, and then we brought it into Photoshop. We exported this UV snapshot and used that as a guide to place this. That's going to be the pretty much, um, you know, a simplified version of how we're going to be working on all of our models. Um, and they're just going to get a little bit more complicated. Um, so if you have, you know, a, 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 if you need transparency that appears on part of your model, if you need uh, incandescence, if you need uh, bump mapping, <laughs> and we'll see that the AI standard surface has a lot more options than this. But it will, uh, with all of these, we could go in and assign a, a texture map to it. That would then drive whatever these these properties are, just like the color is now being driven by this uh, by this uh, by this image right here. Um, so before we go, the last thing I would like to to kind of mention is we can check our UV maps with this uh, uh, map checker up here, this this checker little pattern, and this is going to be the main thing that we use to make sure that our UV maps are not distorted. We just want them to be in kind of correct proportion, which means little squares and not, um, you know, nothing that's kind of pulled or squished in. Um, so if I take this object right here, and we can also check the distortion by coming up to this third little icon. If I click this, if it's all white right there, and that's telling me that this object has no distortion, this UV map has no distortion. If it did, it would have either blue or red kind of in the areas that it was being distorted, whether it was being kind of you know, pushed in or stretched out. Um, so if I get this, this object right here and I scale it, right, nothing happens in this window, even though we obviously see that this is being distorted, right? These are rectangles and this is a square. It's being stretched right there. 
Um, if I go into my actual, if I go into my actual UV map and I grab, let's say these, uh, uh, these uh, edges, and I pull this in, you can start seeing it starts to turn red. Though, if I pull it out the other way, it starts to turn blue. Um, so it shows distortion if I go in and start pulling it, but it's not showing distortion if I go in and grab this object and start pulling it this way. And that is because in the channel box, right, it's registering this object as 111, permanently as 111. Anything I add to that is just being added onto that, but it's still reading this object as 111 right here. So if we go in and we were to, you know, delete this UV map, and create a new one, it would come out very similar to this if we cut it because it's reading these proportions. It's not reading this, uh, you know, 0 0.1548 uh, that we've added on to this. So once we're done with our object, um, what we need to do for it to register this actual, um, the dimensions, um, and not read it as just being arbitrarily kind of uh, stretched is in the same way when we uh, are done with an object and we go up and we delete all by type history to where we kind of um, get rid of all the, the nodes were not being used uh, as the final step of our model. We also want to go before we start doing any UV mapping and go up to modify freeze transformations. So modify freeze transformations. And when I do that, you can see the UV map is now showing distortion because it is now reading not this arbitrary pull, right? All these are set as 1, 1, 1. So this object on the X scale at a value of 1 is now, you know, the correct proportions are being read. So if I shrink it back down to what it was, now it's reading that as 0.39. So when we freeze the transformations, now it is detecting the uh, the, the true parameters of this object now and now that's why we're seeing this distortion so at that it would be then that I would need to go in and grab the UV shell and maybe grab these and pull it out a bit All right, and you'll see they're getting a little bit wider and then I, I could go in and, and uh, so these are getting uh, less, you know, less distorted there, because um, you know we we just froze the transformations. So before you begin any uh, UV map, you want to make sure that the delete all by type history is is uh, is you delete all type by history, and then you also want to make sure you go in and you freeze transformations so it's picking up the actual dimensions of your object. Um, all right, so that's it for UV mapping, uh, the introduction to UV mapping. Uh, on the next tutorial, we're going to actually use this and uh, these principles and go into our crate and uh, create a UV map, bring it into Photoshop, and then apply the logos and then uh, bring that back into Maya and apply that to our final, our final model.